In this video, we are going to talk about solving trigonometric equations by factoring. Now you will notice that the homework questions are at the top of the front side of the page. Normally they are on the back, but I had more space on the front, so that was where I put them. Our very first question here says, solve each of the following without using a calculator where zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two pi. So this part here, the x between 0 and 2 pi, just tells me that we are looking at either one cycle of the graph or we are looking at one circle around the four quadrants. Okay, so we're going to take a look at our first question here. I have sine x plus root 3 sine x times tan x equals 0, and we want to solve. So anytime we're solving, we do have three options. We can solve by rearranging. We can solve by factoring, which is the title of this handout, or we can solve by quadratic formula. Those are the three things that we know how to do. Now, if I wanted to rearrange, that only works if I have one trig ratio. I currently have three and two of them are different, so I would not rearrange for this question. Instead, we're going to see if we can factor. Now, if I want to solve by factoring, rule number one, it has to equal zero or we have to rearrange it to make it equal zero. Second thing we're going to do is see if we can factor. Now this technically has two terms, right? They've got two terms separated by a plus sign. So I have sine x plus root three sine x tan x. Now I have a choice. I could use some variable replacement. So if you feel uncomfortable with trig, you absolutely can do that. Um, but I notice that they both have a sine x and I am feeling very tempted to common factor out that sine x. So I am going to common factor out sine x. If I do that, sine x times 1 gives me sine x, and then sine x times root 3 tan x gives me root 3 sine x tan x, and that still equals 0. Now, once you've factored and you've made something a multiplication question, you can factor, you can set each part equal to zero and solve. So I'm going to look at what makes sine x equal zero. And then I'm also going to look at what makes one plus root three tan x equal zero. But I'm going to try to give myself a little bit of space here. I think I might need it. Okay, let's start with sine x equals zero. Now there's multiple different ways of writing and showing this, but we would like to look at the graph to help us figure this out. So I am going to look at my graph of sine x. So our goal is to try to figure out what angle did we take sine of to get an answer of zero. So I'm going to look here for any places where the y value is zero. And I see that zero, sine of zero is zero, pi, sine of pi is zero, and two pi, sine of two pi is also zero. So there's going to be three possible answers here. Either it was a zero, it was a pi, or it was a two pi. Now there's multiple ways to write this. We're gonna try writing it a little differently than we did yesterday. I am going to try to replace the zero with what we did, like what did I take sine of in order to get that number. So option number one, either sine x was sine of zero, right? We took sine of zero to get zero, or we did sine x equals sine of pi. I really feel like these need brackets. Or we did sine x of 2 pi to get that 0. Right? So to get the 0, we either did sine of 0, we did sine of pi, or we did sine of 2 pi. Right? Those are all things that give me 0. Okay, so what this means, since sine x equals sine of zero, x simply equals zero, right? If sine x equals sine of pi, 
then x is going to equal pi. And if sine x equals sine of 2 pi, then x is just going to equal 2 pi. So I have three solutions, right? Either x is 0, x is pi, or x is 2 pi, right? Could I have just written down x is 0, x is pi, and x is 2 pi? Absolutely. But we're trying to find a format here that we can try to follow consistently when we're solving these questions. OK. We're going to take a look at the next one. So the other bracket was 1 plus root 3 tan x equals 0. So for this one, I need to, first of all, rearrange and figure out what tan x actually equals. So I am going to subtract 1 from both sides to get root 3 tan x equals 0 take away 1, which is negative 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by root 3. So I'm going to get tan x equals negative 1 over root 3. And I've got the tan x by itself. So from here, what we need to try to do is figure out what angle did we take tan of to get negative 1 over root 3. So I'm going to look again at my graphs. This time we're looking at our tan graph. Can I tell what I took um, the tan of to get negative 1 over root 3. Well, the tan graph really is only helpful for zeros, right? It's 0 if I did 0 pi or 2 pi, or it's infinity at the asymptotes at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So the 1 over root 3, I'm not getting that from the graph. I am going to look to see, do I have triangles that have sides of 1 and root 3? So I do notice that the first one here has a side of 1, and it has a side of root 3. So it possibly came from this triangle. So I'm going to draw that triangle over here so that I can write on it. So this is 1, 2, root 3, and this is pi over 3, and pi over 6. Right? I just drew that triangle. OK. In the question, tan x equals negative 1 over root 3. So tan is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. Sorry, my brain stopped for a second there. So I know that in order to do this, we did opposite over adjacent. So looking at my triangle, I'm ignoring the negative for right now. We know the opposite should be the 1. And the adjacent should be the root 3. So at this point, it's a good idea just to check um, that neither of these is the hypotenuse, right? And they didn't end up on the hypotenuse, which they didn't, because the hypotenuse is actually this side here. It's across from the right angle. It's the 2. So this triangle is what I used to get my 1 over root 3. What angle did I use? Well, I like to look at the opposite. Right? The opposite should be across from the angle. Right? That's how we label the opposite side. So I think that the angle that we used was pi over 6, meaning, this is the weird part, that tan of x is the same as negative, and then the 1 third came from doing tan of pi over 6. That was the angle that we took the tan of in order to get the 1 over root 3. All right, so from here, obviously pi over 6 is not the correct angle here because it's negative, right? Tan x doesn't equal tan of pi over 6. Tan x equals negative tan of pi over 6. So I don't think that pi over 6 is actually the answer to this question. But it should be an angle that is related to pi over 6. So on our sheet, it depends on which side you want to look at. I'm going to look at the side that has the triangles. We have a bunch of related angle identities here, which are basically just a more algebraic version of the cast rule. I'm looking at tan. I'm going to look at the right-hand side, and I'm looking for negative tan of an angle. So I have negative tan x is tan of x minus, sorry, pi minus x. I have tan x, I don't want a positive tan x. 
I want a negative tan x. I have one here. Negative tan x is tan of 2 pi minus x. And I have a third one down here, which is tan x equals tan of negative x. Now, we've talked about how a negative angle right, means we're going backwards. So I don't want to use that last one. I'm not going to use that last one actually on any of these. I'm just going to use the three that are listed there. So I want the two that are negative. So because mine here is negative tan, it means it's either tan of pi minus x or it's tan of 2 pi minus x. Like I said, this is the weird part. So here I'm going to say that tan of x is tan of, the first one is pi minus x. Now instead of x, we're using our angle of pi over 6. Right? The other option was that tan x equals tan of 2 pi minus x or minus pi over 6. So these just came from these two identities here, right, that equaled negative tan x. All right, if these are equal, tan x equals tan of pi minus pi over 6, that means this angle x equals pi minus pi over 6. So x equals pi minus pi over 6. And then for this one, x would equal 2 pi minus pi over 6. Okay, all I have left to do is calculate by getting a common denominator. This pi is secretly over 1. In order to get a common denominator, I think I'm going to go for 6. I would have to multiply top and bottom by 6, so I would get 6 pi minus 1 pi over 6, which should be 5 pi over 6. And then this one here, I'm going to do the same thing, has a secret denominator of 1. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 6 to get a common denominator of 6. So x is going to be 12 pi over 6 plus, oh, nope, that's a minus, pi over 6. So that's going to give me 11 pi over 6. So my question has five answers. We have 11 pi over 6. We have 5 pi over 6. We have 2 pi, pi, and 0. So I'm going to finish off this question, zooming out a little bit here, to combine all my answers together into therefore. So I'm going to say therefore x equals 0 pi, 2 pi, 5 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. And those are the five possible angles that when I put them into that equation at the very beginning would give me a zero. All right, that was a lot. Your brain probably hurts a little, and that's normal. I will see you in the next video to take a look at our next question.